Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Landrum from the Department of Psychology at Boise State University, and you're watching my screencast for my research method students about scales of measurement. This is a really important topic for students in this course because it's really essential to understand the scale of measurement of whatever variables you're looking at, and that's going to relate to what types of statistical analysis that you apply to your data, especially when you're thinking about SPSS down the road and actually analyzing the quantitative data from this course. So let's jump into it. So there are four scales. You can think of them as a step ladder, and there's a nice little graphic towards the end to, to uh, kind of summarize all this together. So I'm going to start with the lowest rung of the scale. It's called the nominal scale. And when we have numbers that are nominal scale numbers, nominal scale data, that means that participants have been placed into different categories. There are differences in kind, not degree or magnitude. We would refer to these as qualitative differences. And let me give you some examples. There's a nice little cartoon here I'll give you a moment to pause and look at. And so nominal scale talks about classifications and categories. Um, if we could uh, check box of a yes, no, sometimes they're coded as dummy variables. And what that means is that the dummy variable means that the numbers are meaningless. And so I could code yeses as ones and noes as twos. Uh, the numbers really don't matter. They're just helping me keep track. Uh, some of my examples that I like to talk about are handedness. And so if I code you on a survey as one is left-handed and two is right-handed, or quite honestly, L is left-handed and R is right-handed, that would be nominal scale data, those L's and R's, those ones and twos. Political affiliation would be check a box. Uh, it might it could be very arbitrary. It's uh, Republican equal one, Democrat equal two, uh, Independent equal three. And that's an example of dummy coding. A higher number doesn't mean anything. It just means that it's helping keep track of different categories or classifications. Most of the time, the numbers on a jersey in sports teams don't make any difference. Now, sometimes they do in football, but if you think about basketball jerseys, a higher number doesn't mean you're a better player. A lower number doesn't mean you're a worse player, but the numbers are there to keep track of the different players on the court at one time. Even your last four digits of your phone number, you could think of as nominal scale data. If you think about the last four digits, if you have a higher one than one of your classmates or your best friend, uh, first off, that seems kind of silly because it is, but Secondly, a higher four-digit phone number doesn't mean that your number is any better than someone else with a lower four-digit phone number. And so nominal scale data, are th they're, they're numbers, and they're there to help us keep track of categories, classifications, and the numbers in and of themselves don't really mean anything. They're just like labels. It's like how we're coding things. And so that's one of the key things to remember about the nominal scale. Higher numbers don't mean anything. And down the road, if we're working with uh, two variables and they're both nominal scale, we're going to come, we're going to circle back to SPSS and we're going to talk about the chi-square statistic. Now, oftentimes, to be honest with you, independent variables may be nominal scale as well. So, for instance, that Republican, Democrat, independent example, um, if that were our independent variable, that's actually an independent variable on the nominal scale. All right, so nominal scale, ca categories, classifications, higher numbers don't mean anything. And by the way, uh, this is kind of a peek at an SPSS screen if you were entering this in the um, data view and you want to label that. So here are the different uh, levels of marital status. And so uh, one never married, two married, and so on. You can see that. And notice that the numbers in and of themselves don't really mean anything. This is helping us keep track of the different people in the data set, in an SPSS data set. And so uh, uh, someone who's widowed who gets a score of four that's not twice as good as someone who gets a two who is married. The numbers don't work that way on the nominal scale. We are coming to a scale where they, where they will work that way, but we're not quite there yet. So that's the nominal scale. So the ordinal scale is that next rung up from the bottom of the ladder. So if you take one step up, the first step is nominal scale. Next step above that is ordinal scale. 
and the ordinal scale, now there is a continuum. So the magnitude of the number does mean something. Um, there is a continuum underlying that classification system. Uh, this scale has quantitative differences. And really the, the key thing, and I know I'm jumping the gun on this, but the key thing to remember about ordinal scale is that whenever you're dealing with rank order data, so if I ask you to rank order your best restaurant, your second favorite restaurant, and your third favorite restaurant, that's ordinal data. That one, two, and three, they mean something. So now the numbers are meaningful, but the intervals aren't equal, ratios don't make sense, and we're gonna kinda get to all this here in a moment. So on the ordinal scale, the numbers now do mean something. So your top 20 football rankings, and so the number one team is the best team in the country, according to the pundits. The number 20 team is the 20th, the 110th team is 110th. So the numbers mean something. The distances really aren't equal, so the difference between the number one and two teams in the country might be very minuscule, but the difference between the 109th and 110th team in the country could be huge, depending on you know where they are developmentally, offense, defense, special teams, all that good stuff. Your high school class ranking, so probably somewhere on your transcript from high school, you were ranked X out of Y. You were ranked 5th out of 204 or whatever it was. And so that high school class ranking is ordinal scale data. So that number means something. Um, the finishers in a race, and so if you finish first, second, or third, those numbers mean something. And so the lower the number in this case, the better the finish. Uh, in fact, in all three of these examples, it doesn't always have to be this way, you know, the ranking, usually the lower the number, the better you are. And so that's, that's how this scale tends to operate. So I, I mentioned in an earlier screencast about these uh, Mark Wahlberg research memes, and I think they're great. Um, on the ordinal scale, there is no assumption about the magnitude of the intervals. The units are assumed to be unequal. That is to say, um, if I had the number one, you know, if, if I've got finishers on a race, the person who finished first versus fourth, the gap in time may not be the same gap in time between the fifth finisher and the eighth finisher. Do you see the, the point I'm trying to make here? So four minus one is three, there's three gaps there. Eight minus five is three, there's three gaps there. Um, but the actual times between one and four and five and eight may not be equal. And so the numbers are meaningful, but their interpretation is a little bit tricky, and that's the gag with the Mark Wahlberg research meme. Yeah, I calculate me the means on ordinal measures. If that makes me dangerous, so be it. And in fact, interestingly enough, and this is why it's kind of cute, um, calculating the mean on ordinal scale data doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, let's say that you are a marathoner and uh, you're tracking your finishes in the race and you finished fifth and eighth and 12th and 14th. You wouldn't add average those up and say, my average uh, finish is 8.2 fifths. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, just like with nominal scale data, it doesn't make any sense to take the mean of ordinal scale data either, because th this isn't what we would call our usual use of numbers. So when we're rank ordering, we are using numbers. The, there is a magnitude, there is a continuum, but the numbers don't work well, mathematically speaking. And so, you know, I, I suppose you could try to look at the average ranks of a football team over time, but it would get kind of messy. So if you were 45th one year, 22nd the other year, 13th the next year, no one's probably going to take the average rank of your football team. So it really kind of doesn't make any sense. So we've got the nominal scale at the bottom rung. One rung up is the ordinal scale. The next scale up is the interval scale, and you'll recognize the thermometer that you see here on the screencast. And so on the interval scale, where that next, where that third rung up now, so it's nominal ordinal interval. So on the interval scale, it's a quantitative scale, so the numbers do mean something, except now the, the, num the intervals between numbers are uniform and meaningful. And you can look at either the Celsius side or the Fahrenheit side, but you can see that the gap between 10 and 20 degrees is the same distance between the gap between 60 and 70, or 30 and 40. So 10 is a gap of 10 is a gap of 10 anywhere on the interval scale. 
Now also something that's really important to point out about the interval scale is that zero means something. And so it, in, in other words, zero is an actual value that means something. So when it's zero degrees out, that means it's, it's pretty cold. Um, and you can go below that for negative 10, even when it's zero degrees Celsius out, it's still pretty cold. Uh, and you can go below that. So, so for the interval scale, zero is just another number on the number line. Zero means something. It's not the absence of anything. So for example, to get technical, at zero degrees Kelvin, another measure of temperature, that would really be bad because that means there's the lack of uh, atomic activity. You know, uh, things aren't moving at all. And so, uh, but on the interval scale, uh, just to recap, it's quantitative. Intervals are uniform and meaningful. The gaps are the equidistant and zero means something. So, and here's the example kind of written out for you. The gap between 20 degrees and 40 degrees, that is 20, is the same gap between 40 and 60, 20 degrees on the thermometer. Now here's the issue with psychological examples. And, and to be honest with you, there aren't a lot of good ones. You know, you'd have to find, you know, all the characteristics and zero means something. And sometimes people will debate, uh, if you got a zero on an intelligence test, on an IQ test, would that be um, interval scale? And first off, probably not because uh, IQ tests don't term don't typically go negative. So you can't get a negative five, let's say, on an IQ test. The intervals probably are relatively uniform and equal, but zero probably means something went wrong. You were one off on the bubble sheet. You didn't take it in your native language. Something kind of went haywire. So I think the Fahrenheit scale and even the Celsius scale are really good examples of interval scale. But in terms of real psychological variables, it, it's hard to come up with some. And so you're going to see what we're going to do here in a moment. In reality, uh, we will talk about nominal scale data. We will talk about ordinal scale, but we probably won't talk about interval scale data in and of itself. We're actually going to combine this with another category. If you wanted some technical examples of interval scale, I think I think most of these work well. So latitude and longitude, you can go to the left and to the right of zero degrees latitude, zero degrees longitude. Zero is another number on the scale. The 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 uh, distance between the the ratings, the scale points tends to be equidistant. Your overall financial position, you can be in debt, you could be at zero, you could be in a positive, uh, and you know, a dollar is a dollar, so the distances are equal. However, if I change that to the amount of money in your pocket, that's probably not interval scale because you can't have negative three dollars in your pocket, uh, but you could have a net worth of negative three dollars. Even, even dress sizes, and this is kind of hard to wrap your head around sometimes, but you know, there, I, I'm told, and I, I don't live in this world, but I'm told that there's a size zero, and actually a double zero and a triple zero. They don't go negative necessarily, but zero does mean something. So that's kind of an iffy example of an interval scale, but I hope you get the point. Uh, intervals are equal, um, it's quantitative, and zero means something. It's a regular good old number on the scale. And finally, to wrap this up, nominal ordinal interval ratio, we're climbing up that ladder, ladder to the fourth and the highest rung. Uh, this is a quantitative scale. The intervals are continued to be uniform and meaningful. Here though, in this case, zero means the lack of something. In math, that's called a rational zero point. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, our typical usual use of numbers. So without, you know, special, you know, considerations like ordinal scale and rank ordering, when we use numbers, most of the time we're using ratio scale numbers. And so it's quantitative, the intervals are uniform and meaningful, but zero means the lack of something. So for example, if someone, and this sounds kind of odd because, well, it is. If someone said something was zero inches long, it has no length. If somebody said it took zero seconds to occur, that means it didn't occur because zero means the lack of something, all right, in, in this scale. So, and you don't, don't, you don't go negative here. So there's not a negative one inch or negative three seconds, all right? And so zero, if it, zero means there's not any. Okay, the lack of something. If you have a ruler or a tape measure, it doesn't go negative one, negative two. Um, it goes from zero on up. And so zero inches is the lack. So 
Temperature and IQ are not technically ratio scale uh, because zero means something, uh, but they're really interval scale. And for temperature and IQ, zero is merely an arbitrary point on that scale. So, so it's almost a ratio scale except for this value of what zero means. The, the really cool thing about the ratio scales that ratios are now meaningful when the numbers adhere to the rules of the scale. So now two inches is twice as long as one inch. Ten dollars is twice as much as five dollars in your pocket. Um, uh, an intelligence, no I'm not going to go there. Um, five, Ten dollars is twice the amount of five dollars in your pocket. Um, 10 seconds is twice as long as five seconds. And you can see that because zero is kind of like that, that, that start point, when you have that, you can say now things like um, ratios. However, when you don't have that, like for example, for the interval scale and Fahrenheit, it's a little bit difficult. So for example, uh, 60 is twice 30, that's for sure, but is 60 degrees twice as hot in terms of Fahrenheit as 30 degrees Fahrenheit? And that's kind of weird to say because, well, heat doesn't really work that way. And so that's why a Fahrenheit scale is an interval scale and not a ratio scale. Now, in practice, and this is kind of an important point, and, and we'll do this when we get uh, deeper into our data collection and analysis in this course. In practice, we're going to just slam these last two labels together. You can see on the screen, we're going to talk about an interval ratio scale. So, although technically speaking, and I want you to know this, there's nominal ordinal interval ratio. In practice, in psychological practice, there are three scales, nominal ordinal interval ratio. In fact, down the road, when we're looking at SPSS together, I'll actually show you this. In SPSS, they call interval ratio scale just scale. So you'll see a drop down, they'll say nominal, ordinal, or scale. And in that case, that means interval ratio scale. And so, um, you know, technically speaking, four, four scales of measurement. Practically speaking, for most of psychology, I would say, three scales of measurement, nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio. Here's a nice little stair-step ladder if you've been following the rungs on that. And this is kind of nice because it kind of gives it a little bit differently. Nominal scale attributes are only named. That's the kind of the weakest of the four scale. Attributes can be ordered on the interval scale. Distance is now meaningful on the interval scale. And there's an absolute zero on the ratio scale, which means that ratios for numbers on that scale are now meaningful. You can say twice as much or three times as much as four times as much or whatever. I want to kind of give you just another uh, quick little example from the internet about how you might think about these. And, and I like doing this because um, someone else created this, but I want you to think about it because it might give you a little different slant or perspective. And so you can see the nominal ordinal interval ratio in the descriptions of those, but I like the example. So zip code, nice example of nominal scale. Higher number really doesn't mean anything. It keeps track of different places and locations and regions. Uh, ordinal scale, good, better, best, street numbers. A higher number really doesn't mean you live in a better house. Um, a ratio scale, um, mass, length, electrical current, interval scale you can see, calendar dates. And the operations are kind of interesting because there's some tips there about different statistical methods. And, and trust me, although we're not emphasizing it in this uh, screencast, that last column really matters to us because uh, we have a hard, it's not a hard time, we cannot select the appropriate statistical analysis without knowing the scale of measurement our data are measured on. And so that is really an essential thing as you become that independent psychologist as an undergraduate researcher, you know, that's going to be one of these things where you have to work at it and practice it and eventually it will become second nature over time. Anyway, that's it for me and scales of measurement. This has been for Psych 321 Research Methods.